Now you might think that Chinese writing looks intimidating, but I found seven even crazier writing systems, like the one invented by a man who couldn't even read or write. So in no particular order, here are the top seven most bizarre, unforgettable, and beautiful scripts in the world. The Tibetan script is used to write certain languages of the Himalayas, languages that I have no idea how to pronounce, but there's no harm in looking. The Tibetan script was invented by this guy in the 7th century, while staying in this particularly cool spot out in the mountains of Tibet. This is part of a monastery where kings used to meditate. So why did he create this script? Well, Tibetans say it was meant for writing Buddhist scripts, but academics will just tell you, no, 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 that's all just a legend. Here's how it works. There are 30 basic letters, and they are all consonants, but not to worry because each letter has something called an inherent vowel, which means they don't write the vowel, they just assume it's there. And that vowel is A. That's right, every single letter has an invisible A. So on their own, the sounds are all like this. So how do you manage that when you write it down then? Well, that's what these little marks are for. When you write them above or below a letter like this, they change the vowel sound. Pretty cool, right? So to make words, you stack letters around each other, over, under, beside, and the shape of a letter can even change to fit the shape of a word. So good luck with that. As for punctuation, Tibetan has two things, a dot that separates syllables and a stripe that is a full stop. But there are tons of decorative marks, like these fascinating brackets. And then just for good measure, they throw in some extra letters that can only be used for writing one language, Sanskrit. <laughs> Mongolian looks like it is raining combat knives, and they use this cool script to write all of these languages. The vertical lines are the traditional way to write, and they flow from left to right. It was originally written horizontally, but they wanted to copy the old top to bottom Chinese writing style, so they rotated their script 90 degrees anti clockwise, but without changing the orientation of the letters. See how that worked? Now, Mongolian is an alphabetic script with consonants and vowels, but here's the catch. There are seven vowels and only five vowel letters. That's right. And then there's this. The letters have different shapes depending on their position in a word, so you don't always know what letters you're reading. Why be simple if you can be madly confusing, right? But that is not the end of it. A number of letters are written exactly the same, like D and T. Yeah, I know, it's gonna need a whole new video to explain that. All I know is that there aren't enough letters for all of the sounds, so some of them have to pull double duty. Are you good at counting extremely fast? Well, look at the Mongolian word for pig. Words like pig are hard to make sense of. There's just a bewildering sequence of little bumps. They're called teeth, and quite a few of the letters I like this, but I'm gonna make things real easy for you. Something that is a lot easier to decipher though are the like and subscribe buttons that you can click right here if you wanna hear more videos about language learning. And turn on the notification bell as well if you wanna get notified of the next video. Now, are you ready for a top secret script that's making a comeback? The script called Nushu was created and used exclusively by women a long time ago in the Hunan province of China. Now, women were forbidden formal education for many centuries, so they decided to make a secret script to write their secret thoughts to one another. And when your feet have to fit in these, I'm pretty sure there's a lot to complain about. Each symbol represents a syllable, and they wrote it using sharpened bamboo sticks and ink from the burnt leftovers in a wok. When they couldn't write, they embroidered messages into cloth. It has a funny nickname too, mosquito writing. Think it's a good one? Well, here's how it works. The strokes are skinny slashes, dots, and arcs, and you write them in vertical columns from top to bottom and right to left. Unlike Chinese characters, the symbols don't represent any kind of meaning, only pronunciation. Although there are six or seven hundred of them, and many are based on Chinese characters. But others are modeled on embroidery stitches and designs, and the best part is that Nu Shu is sung rather than read. And no, you're not going to get a demonstration. Go get your 
Charlie Du Dong. When a Cherokee man named Sequoia decided to create an alphabet for his language, some of his people thought the practice was witchcraft and that it wasn't a good idea to fix words to paper. The story goes that everyone laughed at him for trying to copy the white people's talking leaves. Besides, Sequoia didn't know how to read or write at all, but 12 years later he finished his Cherokee writing system just by being one hell of a smart guy. Each character represents a syllable, not just one letter. So for example, this letter is a syllable that says ma, and this one says tss, 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 tss. Okay, Cherokee is kind of hard to pronounce. There are 85 of these characters, and they are usually arranged in chart form with a column for each vowel and a row for each consonant. So if you wanted to write Lisa, you would go down the chart to the L row and across to the I row, and there's the sound for Li, and then you do the same for Sa. You see what I mean? Now you can write your name in Cherokee. Now speaking of cool stories, if there is a language that you are dying to learn, you might enjoy reading about the way that I teach language, which is through stories. See, I have learned languages all my career through stories, and I created a way to learn a new language through stories, which is called story learning. It teaches you languages the same way that you learned your first language as a child, which was through stories, with your parents reading you books and listening to things that happen around you. It's all very natural and it gets really great results for people. There is a free story learning kit that I've put together that you can check out if you want to find out more about the story learning method. It's completely free, you get a bunch of cool stuff included. Check the link in the description for access to that. <laughs> writing was created by a king and it's really really beautiful don't you think but reading it is another story it has 44 consonants 32 vowels and you have to remember which tone marker to write on each letter since there are four of them now to make matters worse many of the consonants have the exact same sound exactly the same sound so how the heck do you know what letter you are hearing not to worry there is a word that goes with each sound so remember learning a is for apple s is for snake remember that sort of thing well Thai does that but not just for five-year-olds. Take a look. These three Thai consonants all sound like S, so the word in brackets tells you which S is being used. To compare, if English had three different S's, we would have to do something like S snake, S sugar, S skeleton. The very short explanation is that Thai used to have a lot more sounds back in the day, and now they can't pronounce those subtle differences between them, so they just don't. Could Thai be the strangest scriptable? Well, I'm not so sure. There is a pretty otherworldly one coming right up. The script known as Bai Bayin is like a day at the beach. It's all waves and seashells. There is one simple rule with this script. You spell it the way that you say it. It's a Filipino script that has many, many forms and was once used a lot more in ancient times. When the Spanish colonized the Philippines, Filipino languages took a lot of Spanish words and Babayan script didn't have letters for those new sounds, so the Spaniards made a reformed way to write it. There are 15 consonants and only three vowels in Babayan. A, E or E, and O or U. Hear that? I and E are the same and O and U are the same. Now I know you've been paying attention, so by now you know how syllabic writing works. A sound, so this is Ba, this is Baba, and this is Baba Ba. Yep, the consonants and vowels are written as one unit, so each character has a default A sound. Ba, ka, da, ga, ha, la, ma, na, nga, pa, ra, sa, ta, wa, and ya. And to change the ending to a different vowel sound, you just add a little mark. A mark above adds an E or S sound, and the mark below adds an O or U sound. Now what's a bit tricky is that you don't have to use that exact mark. No, it can be a dot, a circle, a tick, an apostrophe, a line, an arrowhead it could be. Want to remove the A sound? Well, you simply write a little cross underneath the letter to cancel it out, you vowel killer, you. And punctuation, well, it's really easy. One vertical line is a comma, two lines is a full stop. So, got a question? Well, just use the same two lines. It's really quite straightforward. Who wrote it? Where was it made? What do these bizarre words and vibrant drawings represent? What secrets do its pages contain? If laid back is not your thing, well, what about a cult phenomenon? The Voynich manuscript is 240 pages of mystery. It's a beautiful 15th century manuscript full of looping handwriting in an unknown language or code and illustrated with weird pictures of real and imaginary plants, naked women bathing, castles and dragons, and astrology diagrams. 
That's right, but nobody knows what this alphabet means. It's managed to go undeciphered for more than 100 years. So what on earth is it? Science? Is it magic? And who even wrote it? Now there was one Egyptologist who thought he had deciphered a few sentences like this one, but it's still a completely maddening mystery because nothing actually adds up. It has all the characteristics of a real language. There are consistent patterns, a few letters borrowed from medieval languages, and even two different handwriting styles. It's alphabetic like Latin, but some features are more like Chinese and yet others seem more like Greek. But then it has this whole kind of ancient Hebrew vibe too. So what's going on? Bottom line, nobody can read it. Maybe you'll be the one to decipher it, who knows? But if you want to get some practice with a slightly simpler alphabet, then you can practice with one that's so easy that you can learn this alphabet in a few hours, along with a language that's blowing up around the world. And it's all in this video right here. So go and check that out right now.